Good morning. I'm glad to see you here today. Uh, we have some at a ladies' retreat. Uh, we have some uh, at their honeymoon. Uh, we had a wedding here yesterday, and so David and Vanessa are off on their honeymoon today. I was telling uh, Mario over here that I, I, have you guys been married a couple of years, right? Three years? Uh, four years. Four this years. Year. Wow, congrats. Thank you. And uh, he said he was going to bring the baby today and his wife, but the baby's not feeling well. But Anyway, I was telling Mario that uh, I would try to get David and Vanessa to just jump over a broom and not have the whole drawn-out ceremony, and they said, no, no, we want the wedding. So we, we had a nice wedding here yesterday. It was very nice and very beautiful. I joked with him about the broom later, and he said no. So, And I was the guy that was leading the chant, you know, at the reception where you, you, you ring your knife on the glass to get him to kiss. But we didn't have any glassware out there, so I was just saying, let's just chant and get him to kiss. So... But we had a good time. So that's where some of the crowd is today. But I'm glad to see you here today. Glad to know that you're here in the Lord's house. So let's stand and we're going to sing a couple of songs. Blessed be your name is the first one. Blessed be your name. And then we're going to sing another song after that. All right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there's pain in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out all Turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Amen. At the name of Jesus Christ, that should be something that we always are thinking about. And now we're going to sing what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name. 
You were the Word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. You are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you have given us your name, a name that is above all names. Lord, the name means rescue or savior. Thank you for dying for us. Help us to always praise you and lift you up no matter what we're going through. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. Also to say that not only do we have the ladies retreat and the honeymooners, but we also have some that have gone to a graduation in Waco, Texas. So they said, well, we're eating at uh, Cracker Barrel and we're eating at Rudy's Barbecue, which is my favorite barbecue. And uh, so that's, but you're here. That's the important thing. Amen? And uh, it's great to see you. And it's a beautiful day. It's nice and a little breeze for us to have. A lot of things to be thankful for. God has blessed. Uh, traveling mercies again. Amen? God got you from point A to point B. Okay? Um, and Wayne is back home out of the hospital. I saw him this week. And I saw... Uh, well, we didn't see, but Donna is out of the hospital and into uh, care. 
and Susie and Suzette were able to be at the wedding. So they were both feeling much better. And so we're glad for that. And Jerry's family is having a good time in Washington. And Ricardo's sister has been reading the Bible, uh, sending him verses. So that's great. And uh, Virgil said that he had a flying success at the DMV. It went smashingly. Okay? So well, that's pretty good. Amen? Have that happen. So um, just God continues to do some things. Um, so what are you thankful for? Or what are you praising the Lord for today? Does anybody have anything they're thanking the Lord for today? Okay, hold on a second. Everybody jumped at once. Go ahead. Six feet above the ground. Okay, that's good. Waking up. Amen. Waking up. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. Jerry? All right. All right, for sure. We'll definitely pray. And for the ladies as they travel back, uh, Darcy and Katie and Amanda got to go to the... How are you guys doing back there without mom and wife? You going okay? Yeah, they sort of like, uh, huh? maybe. I think Bo's been having a good time. There's a powwow going on. Did you guys bring the death whistle that you found? Was it just somebody dropped it there? Or? Oh, okay. It's a famous indigenous people thing. It's, it's an Aztec death whistle. And it makes just a crazy sound. But they were at the powwow, and so they had to have that. So. But uh, I'm, we're glad to allow the ladies to be away, and we're anxious for them to come back because the laundry and the dishes have piled up. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. That would not happen. It would not go over very well at my house. So I don't know about anywhere else. I appreciate the guys coming and working on the hedges this past week and keeping them looking nice. We're going to do some other work. So, okay, anybody else thankful, praising the Lord for anything? All right. So we do have some prayer requests today. Um, if you will remember, uh, Yvonne asked us to pray specifically for people in her family their names are on the spiritual needs, Linda and Andrea. Uh, they're going through some things. And so uh, Yvonne said, please continue to pray for them that they'll come to Christ. And also uh, Lori and Darren are struggling with addictions. Uh, Darren is Dwight's brother and Lori is Melody's daughter. So we need to pray for them. And uh, pray for Randy for work. Pray for the unspoken requests that you see listed. Uh, continue to pray for... Uh, Tina and Dwight's family, their sons, Ricardo and Oscar and Diego, so that Diego can get a place to live, so the Lord can open some doors. Okay, we're glad that Isabel is here, but Isabel would appreciate our prayer. She sees a doctor on the 17th, yes, and there was a good report about Nona. Um, she had some tests done to see, and uh, uh, Mike said that she's still not feeling 100%, but they really didn't find anything. So they're sort of glad for that. She had an endoscopy and a colonoscopy. She's braver than I would be in the same day. Okay, so uh, we need to pray for her that she'll feel better. I know that she would appreciate that. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, definitely for these that have recently lost loved ones. We need to pray about the situation in Buffalo uh, with the shootings and the families that are affected there, that uh, God can be with those families. And we need to pray. It says in the last days, that it'll be as it was in the days of Noah, where men's hearts and women's hearts will be only evil continually. And we want to press back against that with uh, a, a Christian worldview, and we want to, to be in prayer. And God answers prayer in incredible ways, not just for us, not for our church, but for our community, for our nation, for our world that the Holy Spirit will be at work and that, uh, that God can be 
Uh, I saw a, a gentleman this past week. Um, we're doing a memorial service um, on Thursday. And he would been married for 53 years to his middle school sweetheart. And he's very broken up. And so I just prayed and said, I know, Lord, that uh, you can help them, give them strength for this journey. And so, but people are hurting. And, and some of you may be that way today. So but we want to take some time to pray about those things. All right? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. We come to you humbly, Lord, thanking you for this precious gift that we have, that we can have a conversation with you through prayer. And Lord, you've been working in some great ways. You've been helping those that have been ill to feel better. You've given us traveling mercies. Lord, you're working to do spiritual things in people's lives. It was good to see so many people here last Wednesday night for Set Free. Lord, uh, we're thankful that some were able to uh, go to a retreat and uh, David and Vanessa are, are thrilled about their wedding and now they're starting their lives together uh, as husband and wife, Lord. Um, we're thankful for all those things, the answers to prayer, just that you take care of us and we were able to wake up and be on this side of the grass and, and you just are watching over us, Lord. Thank you for that. Uh, we pray for those that are going through grieving processes right now because loved ones have died. We know about Damien's family, and we think about this family that's coming on Thursday. Uh, we think about the families of those in Buffalo. Lord, sin and wickedness are in men's hearts to cause them to do terrible things. And Lord, I pray for those families in that community that's grieving today that you have, might have your hand there. I pray for still the situation in Ukraine, the believers and unbelievers that are being affected both in Ukraine and in Russia. And we pray for Ida, possible cancer. We pray for Ricardo and Oscar and Diego. We pray for Debbie needing surgery. And we're thankful that Wayne's doing better, but continue to be with him. And be with Michi's family and her friends. Pray for Donna, that she'll have full healing. Lord, from this broken bone. Uh, we pray for Angel with leukemia. We pray, Lord, that uh, you might be with us with our needs, whether it be work or health or emotional, that you might also be, though, Lord, in our community, that as we speak out to others in your name, whether it be our coworkers or our neighbors or our friends, that we can pray for our community, pray for Chula Vista, San Diego, Tijuana, California, the United States, around the world, Lord, that the Spirit will continue to work, that, that people's hearts will be touched in by the name of Jesus Christ, because that's what it's all about. Lord, that you can do awesome things, and you can cause their lives to be changed, cause communities to be changed, our nation is being torn apart. And we pray for our leadership of our nation that you might have your hand upon them and help them to make wise decisions. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I know you boys and girls are going to be a little disappointed, but today you guys get to stay here. All right? And we're going to talk about something, and I may ask for volunteers to show how well they know how to read. And that doesn't mean the adults. That means you guys. Okay? So, um, I did find out this. I was told by Katie that depending on how you guys do, and if you're able to answer questions really well the next time you get together, that she'll have some prizes. Okay? So, sorry that we don't have anything set up. Um, but I know it's no consolation to you, you young ones. But some of you older ones, remember, nobody went out. They all stayed in church. I stayed in church, and sometimes I would get pinches on the arm that I did not appreciate from my mom to straighten up. But they would also maybe give me the bulletin and a piece of a pen. I could write and draw pictures and do stuff. So... Thank you for being patient with us. Parents, thank you. Hopefully you won't be too frazzled by the time we get through with this today. Pardon me. It's right there. All right. 
created with a purpose. Today we're only going to be in one, well actually two chapters in 1 Corinthians. So if you have a Bible and you want to turn there, you can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and we're going to be partially in chapter 13 as well. Because we're going to talk about how we're the body of Christ and members individually. We are the body of Christ and yet members individually. And in this chapter, there are some very interesting things that are talked about. And it's almost giving us a science lesson and a biology lesson all in one. Because what we're going to emphasize today, that our bodies have different things that are attached. We have hands. We have feet. We have ears. We have noses, eyes. We have a brain. We have internal organs that are important. We have all kinds of parts of our body that are very important for our existence. When you start getting to be my age and a little older, when those things start to be achy and painy and failing a little bit, then we start to realize maybe even more their importance. But the Bible very plainly says we're the body of Christ. We are in the shape of a human body, if you will, with Jesus. And that's what the church is. Not just the members, but the ones that are attending here as well. You're part of the body of Christ. The called out assembly. The building is not the church. We're the church. And God brings us together to do certain things for Him. And so we want to look at this today. Each one of us has... Just as each part of our body has an individual use and function, my hand can do tremendous things. can do stupid things too, right? But there are things that my feet can do that my hand cannot. You say, well, I, uh, how is that true? Walk around on your hands for a little while and see how it does. Because most of us are used to walking on our feet, Right? So each one of us has a particular place that God wants us to operate and do things. We all have a purpose. So this is part of our thing created with a purpose. We're not robots. We're all stamped out exactly the same. Uh, we have different uh, thoughts, different passions, different likes, different experiences. And so Paul is going to talk about this with this early church and also share with us so that we might know. So, as a believer in Jesus, every one of us has been given a gift of the Holy Spirit that brings benefits. Now, don't confuse this with the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are in Galatians, and it's love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faith, meekness, all those things wrapped together that the Holy Spirit brings to us that then we all have to produce together. We all put out together. Could we use more love? Absolutely. Could we use more gentleness or kindness or faith? Absolutely. Those are things the Holy Spirit works in each one of us. But then here in 1 Corinthians, we're told that each one of us has a unique gift given by the Holy Spirit. It's a spiritual gift that can be used in a practical way. It'll bring a benefit. Okay? Have you ever received a gift? And, and you kids can answer this too. I mean, if you're below the age of, let's see, 12, did you ever get a Christmas gift or a birthday gift and you think, why did I get that? I wanted a basketball. I wanted a football. I wanted a doll. I wanted a car. But instead I got a pair of socks. Yeah? Sometimes you look at that and you say, no, what good is that? It's not a toy and it's not money that I can go buy candy. It's a pair of socks. Sometimes we wonder that as adults too, right? We get a gift and we're like, what was that person thinking when they gave me this gift? I, what am I going to ever use it? Uh, my daughter accuses me. She got me a... Uh, Thing. It stands about this tall. It was a collector's item. And you open it up, and it's one of those little flying drones.
but it's in the shape of a Star Wars X-Wing. And I tried flying it, and it flew into the neighbor's yard, and I barely got it back. So I've not taken it out. I might bring it here and try to fly it around the auditorium. But she's like, Dad, I got you that gift, and you never take it out and use it. It's like a collector's item, okay? I don't want to break it. I don't want to destroy it. But have you gotten, how many of you will say, I've gotten gifts for my birthday or for Christmas, and I couldn't figure out their usefulness, and I couldn't figure out why I got it. Anybody agree with me on that? Okay, a few of you will say, okay, okay. Now, hopefully, our families get to know us better as we get older, and they'll give us things that make sense, right? I told my family what I would like. One of my family members is famous for saying right after Christmas, well, for my birthday, this is what I want when the birthdays come in November, okay? And so I just simply said, after Mother's Day, I said, you know what I would like for Father's Day? I would like a couple of those barbecue mitts that can handle heat because I had cooked a pork roast and I wanted to shred it. And it's just so hard to do with a pair of forks or something. So I want a couple of those. And they said, well, it's not even Father's Day. And I'm just, I'm throwing out ideas that have practical purposes. Somebody gave me a talking spatula. It has, you know, I don't even want to use it. And it says, hey, the food's done now or something like that. But when God gives us gifts... God gives us things that will bring benefits. And so he works to develop in our lives. Now, the list is very interesting, and we won't go too far in depth, but I want to show you that it pretty much broadly covers the spectrum of what's needed in the local church. All right? So we're going to start reading in verse... Wow. Something didn't get saved right. All right, um, Jeremy and Jerry, can you guys help me, please? This may not even have anything other than the first point, and I could have sworn I did this. All right, guys, Jeremy and Jerry, can you help me, please? What I'm going to ask you to do is go into this room in here. There are Bibles in there. We're going to have to do this old school. We have to open our Bibles. So if you would like a Bible, there's on the table right in back there, and you can take them if anybody needs Bibles. If you want to look it up on your phone, it is in the bulletin. All right? I know it's correct in the bulletin. All right? So if you want to look it up in a Bible, okay, you guys find the Bibles? They're just paperbacks. This has been a week and a half. Does anybody want a bulletin? I think they went to get a snack. Anybody want a bulletin? All right. Are you guys coming back? Okay. Does anybody want a Bible? Anybody want a Bible? They do have it in the bulletin. Joanna would like a Bible. All right. Otherwise, you can just set them there on the chair. All right, I guess everybody's either got a bulletin. All right. Starting in verse number one. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So God's working in our lives. And if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are not going to say anything against Jesus Christ. You're not going to blaspheme. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Holy Spirit. So they don't go against one another. There's differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Would you agree to me that we, with me that we need to have somebody in the church 
that can speak a word of wisdom. Is that important? To know God's word? It doesn't have to be the pastor. Okay? It, it can be somebody that knows the word really well. And you might say, well, I, I want that job. If you know the word of God really well and can speak it into people's lives, amen. We need someone to share the word of wisdom. We need someone to bring the word of knowledge. Now, knowledge and wisdom are closely related, but it's slightly different. As I'm teaching on Tuesday nights to set free at the Overstreet School of Ministry, we've been talking about the Bible, and I've been sharing knowledge with them, and a lot of them are saying, wow, I didn't know that. That's something that's new to me. I didn't know that. Are they going outside or just? Uh, can one of you guys open the gate and let them go out in the grassy area? I don't mind. We can see. I can see him right here. Yeah, he's going to open it. Okay. So knowledge is important. How well do you know the Bible? Well, I don't know it very well. Maybe that's not what the gift has been given to you. I retain trivial facts. My family's like, how did you know that? Well, I just retain trivial facts. And I don't know that that's necessarily my gift. Because it could be knowledge of other things too. It could be knowledge of other spiritual things. It could be knowledge of a lot of things. Well, let's go on. To another faith by the same Spirit. To help people increase their faith. You speak into their lives and share what God is doing in your life so that their faith can grow as well. Abraham was a tremendous man of faith. So these are things the Holy Spirit will bring. Here's another one that's interesting to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit. Now, let me pause here. We list us some interesting things that some people have distorted in today's church. I'm going to rapidly go through it, and I'll come back and talk about each one. Gifts of healings, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works in all these things, distributing to each what individually as he wills so you see there's a whole lot of spiritual gifts there and there's some that are controversial namely the healing and the miracles and the prophecy and the speaking in tongues maybe you visited a church that they practice heavy duty everybody speaks in tongues well hold on the scripture says, if you're going to speak in tongues, do it by two or three and have an interpreter present. That's here in these three chapters, 12, 13, and 14. And it's spiritual gifts. Those spiritual gifts don't go to everybody. Well, do you believe in healing? Faith healing? Absolutely. I believe that God can heal miraculously. I read about somebody the other day that they had a tumor in their throat and they said, we've got to go see the doctor about it. And they went back to see the doctor and the doctor says the tumor's not there. That's the answer to prayer. That's healing, okay? I don't necessarily believe in what some practice as touch healing where they say, come up here and I'm going to knock you down with my hands because... If, you know, Jesus went everywhere healing. He just didn't go to a church service somewhere. He would go to where the people were at that needed to be healed. Um, so they focus on some things to the detriment of others. And we'll look at it a little bit further in. But we say, well, pastor, do you believe in the gift of, of tongues? I think that there are people that have a very quick ability to pick up other languages and to be able to understand what people are saying. Uh, Maggie Comans used to be a member of our church. She could speak Flemish, French, Spanish, English, probably some Portuguese, because she had picked up those languages in her family, and so she was good at that. I, I can't even hardly, I'm always afraid to speak anything in Spanish that I'll say the word wrong and get in trouble. 
mean one thing and say something else totally and somebody gets offended. It's hard enough for me to speak in English. We also need an interpreter of tongues because there might be a time where somebody comes in and they're trying, and well, we need someone that handles this to know this. But each one of these gifts, prophecy, prophecy is not making a prediction. Brother, this is what I see in your future. I've known guys that have said those things and they haven't come true. Well, now that's a little scary. That doesn't sound like a gift of the Spirit. But instead, to say, if this is the way you continue in your life, there was a young man here this morning that got coffee that struggles with addiction and he's homeless. And I keep saying to him, your life is circling the drain. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he's dead from exposure or from not eating enough or from an overdose. And so I could say to him very easily, this is where your life is going. That's part of Old Testament prophecy is not only saying about the future, but saying this is your circumstances and what God's going to do right now if you don't get it straightened out. So these gifts are important. They're, we need them. The same Spirit works in all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So you might have the gift of faith and you can help other people have more faith. You might have the gift of prophecy where you can speak into somebody's life and say, hey, this is what God can do through you. Believe it. Again, you could have the gift of miracles and healings. Shirley Lineback was a great, powerful lady when it came to prayer. She wasn't very tall. Some of you remember her. She was very short. She was always here in church, and she believed 100% in the power of prayer. And if we would gather around somebody to pray, I would normally say, Shirley, I want you to start off first because she believed that God could work Mary. I do too, but she had an extra uh, belief. And so those are gifts of the Spirit. We don't want to practice. Every one of us is not going to have the same one. We're not going to all practice the same one. God puts it in the church as it's needed to help the church function as the body of Christ. They bring benefits into our church. And I don't want to attack people spiritually. I don't want, I don't want to attack other groups. But I would just say, what are we going to focus on here? We're going to focus on everything all blended together, or are we just going to say everybody has to have one gift? Because the Bible doesn't say everybody has to have one gift. Okay, it says we all have several gifts. Now, the next point, I don't have it on the PowerPoint, unfortunately. Every one of us is part of the body of Christ, but we are all different and unique. Every one of us is part of the body of Christ, but we are all different and unique. All right, so he typed some down for us. Thank you. Did you know that each one of us here today has an imperfection involving your ears? Did you know that? One ear is higher than the other. Every one of us. And this ear is not a carbon copy of this ear. It's not even a mirror image of this ear. So it's different. And some of you, as you get older, some of your ears hear better than the other ear. Pastor, let me sit on your left side because my right ear gets better than my left ear. Okay? Your eyes, they're not identical, are they? Your hands. How many of you are right-handed? How many of you are left-handed? If you are left-handed, your left hand is typically bigger than your right hand. Did you know that? Our bodies are not symmetrical. Have you ever had a problem with getting the exact shoe size? Because one shoe is like 10, and the other one is like 10 and a quarter. It's not quite 10 and a half. Do I do 10 and a half, or do I do 10? They won't like me if I buy a 10 and a half and a 10 right so our body is slightly different notice if you will when you get to walk somewhere which leg when you're standing still and you go walk somewhere what leg goes first your right leg or your left leg well it just depends on where i'm going pastor walt how i'm maneuvering but 
we are all different and unique as part of the body of Christ. We're not all the same. Let's read on into the chapter. For as the body is one and has many members, this is in verse 12, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as He pleased. Now sometimes... My feet and my nose get confused. Because my nose is supposed to smell and my feet are supposed to run, right? But sometimes my feet smell and my nose runs, right? It's confused. But these feet have a purpose. They take me places. My hands have purposes. They do things. My eyes. And we'll, we'll go down a list in just a minute and talk about those things. The eye cannot say to the a hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on which we, and these we bestow greater honor, and on our unrepresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. Have you ever heard it said that all of us, just like in our first year of life, should have our appendix removed? Did you ever hear that? Because they were saying it's, it has no purpose in the human body and everybody has to have it out eventually. And then they did a little bit more scientific study and they said, oh, actually the appendix has good purposes. It's needed. Let's not automatically take it out unless it has a problem. There are parts of your body that you don't even think about sometimes, but it plays an important function in your body. So the parts of our church, the individuals, you play an important role. You say, well, pastor, sometimes I feel like a foot. Well, foot are needed. Feet, pardon me. You as a foot are needed because feet, what do feet do? Well, we stand on them and they take us places. So we need people in the church that are, are saying, let's go team, let's get moving, let's get out to the community, let's go out to where there's needs. Eyes. What happens if you can't see well? You get cataracts, you get glaucoma, macular generate, you know, we don't even want to talk about that kind of stuff, right? And they do laser treatment, and they do all kinds of stuff, remove the cataracts. But our eyes are important because they help us to see up close, and they help us to see at a distance. I'm very glad that my eyesight has not changed. My new prescription is very close to my old one. The doctor said, Hit your right eye, you have good sight. We need people to be eyes, to see things up close and to see things in the distance and be able to look at that and say, hey, this is coming up. How many of you, when you're driving on the freeway at 70 miles an hour, you're just looking at the car in front of you and not looking up the road to see what's ahead? I try, if I'm driving 70, I'm watching the cars around me and what they're going to do, but I'm also watching ahead of me to see brake lights in the distance, and I'm also watching behind me to see if there's any flashing red and blue lights. Okay? Cause, or anything that looks like it might sprout suddenly, red and blue lights. So my eyes are important. Well, our eyes of our church help us to see what's going on here and what do we need to do? What do we need to affect to reach the school or reach parents or to reach the people that are in the park? What can we do? Our ears need to be listening. So each one of us, are. you can't take your ear and put it down on the ground and expect your body to be moved by your ear, can you? but the ear has a very important role. So each one of us in the church 
has an important role. Whatever God tells you your gift is, whatever God shares with you what you're supposed to do here in the church. Now notice in our list, it didn't say criticism was a gift of the Spirit. But yet sometimes there's people that are very critical of everything that goes on. Or uh, not, uh, the, there's not a gift of uh, discouragement. Never watched Winnie the Pooh? And he's got a happy-go-lucky attitude. And then he finds his friend. Which one is it? Eeyore. Oh, me. That's not a spiritual gift. Now, understand that sometimes things will happen to bring discouragement into your life and then you might just automatically bring it back out. James says that what we have inside is going to come out. Jesus said that as well. And we shouldn't be looking down on people, but if you are constantly trying to discourage, we say, hey, we're going to go down and, and provide lunches to the teachers. Do you really think we ought to do that, Pastor? We can't even provide lunches for us. Or well, I say, uh, we're going to give the kids ice creams at their field days. Do we really think we can't even give our kids ice creams in church? Discouragement, we've got to get beyond that. So make sure that you're seeking what God wants you to do and say, help me to find the part that I'm supposed to do. Not all of us are called to be telling vast numbers of people about Jesus Christ. But we're all told to tell somebody. Okay? You may not be a Billy Graham, but if you just tell one person, they might be the Billy Graham. Uh, we're not all called to be prayer warriors, although we should all pray. I know people that spend hours in prayer. And I'm like, I don't, how do you do that? I, I try to pray when I can and, and make time to pray. I don't know how somebody prays for hours. But we're all supposed to pray. So do you understand what I'm saying about how we are all part of the body of Christ, but we're all different and yet we're unique in that makeup? Let's read a little further. God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part that lacks it. There should be no schism in the body. And the members should have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. How many of you like to eat ice cream? Okay. The pleasures of the tasting of that ice cream cone. Saturday before Mother's Day, we went out to Santee and ate at Raising Cane's, and then we went to Handel's Ice Cream, and I got a Twixter ice cream. It had little cookies and caramel. Oh, it was delicious. And as I ate that, my body was like, thank you very much for gifting your taste buds with this ice cream. My hand was doing its best not to get sticky and all messed up, but my body enjoyed it, okay? But... When I'm hammering something and I hit my thumb on the nail, my whole body feels the pain, right? We know that. So we have to be caring for one another and watching. That's why God gave us all the gifts. And some of that, it said discernment of the Spirit. That's looking at somebody and talking to them and saying, brother, sister, I think you're struggling. Can I pray for you? Can I help you in this area? Knowing what's going on. They're all important. We are the body of Christ and members individually. Every one of us should be doing what God created for us. And it should be tempered, though, with love. We shouldn't just be doing it because, well, that's my obligation. i got to do it. We should be doing it out of love. We're going to continue to read the chapter, and then we're going to go into chapter 13. Remember, chapters and verses were provided way after the Bible was initially written to make it easier for us to find locations. And so I think we ought to just keep reading into the next chapter as he's talking about these gifts of the Holy Spirit. 
and how we should use them. Go back to verse 28 in chapter 12. God has appointed these in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? What's your answer? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? I'm hearing a few no's. The answer to all these is no. Do all have gifts of healings? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Now, in chapter 14, Paul goes on to say, to have all these spiritual gifts is great, but you really need to focus on telling people about Jesus Christ and helping them to understand God's Word. And that's so important. But as he goes down this list, he says, does everybody have all of these things? No, we're unique. We're different. Earnestly desire the best gifts. Ask God to help you grow into what He wants you to be, into what you ought to do. All of us had parents that we love, grandparents. I think that you can do this with your life. I think this is what you can accomplish. And maybe you did, maybe you've accomplished something else. That's great. But you're pushing towards it. You're pressing towards the prize of the high calling. Desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And now we go into chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men, that's talking about speaking in tongues, and of angels, if I don't have love. Now, the word used in the Greek means unconditional love. Okay? Not brotherly love, not erotic love, but love as God loves us, unconditionally. So even if I have all these gifts, but I don't have love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Have you ever been somewhere where somebody's trying to play a trumpet and they're not accomplishing it? It sounds like a dying duck. Or have you ever had somebody in a concert? I, I've been with the marching band a few times and there's a few times that whoever's doing the cymbals is not doing them in the right place. They're just... We, uh, years ago when the 99 cent only store was having its grand opening, the one over here on 3rd, they asked the marching band to come for the grand opening. So we all got over there and we're all set up and, and I'm looking at some of the young ladies that were going to play the drums. And I'm looking at them and I'm looking at them and I say, where did you guys leave the drumsticks? at the school how are you guys going to play the drums we don't know Mr. Dorr I need to run back to the school and I'll be right back with the drumsticks I was trying to keep it low key so he wouldn't get upset and so they and it became a, an ongoing joke for a while after that do you guys got your sticks I can't imagine how they were going to try to bay those big old bass drums without any kind of drumsticks. But if we, if we say, well, I've got this great spiritual gift, but I don't exercise it with love, it's of no use. Though I have the gift of prophecy, next slide, please, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So I can have a huge amount of faith, but if I don't have love towards other people. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself does not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, 
thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Is that the last of the slide? Yes. Love is important. We need the gifts. We need the gifts. I, I watched a little bit of a mockumentary on a sports team and their success. And it was showing the, the athletes struggle with drugs and with other things. And I thought, man, I, I don't guess I've ever seen that side of professional sports. I don't know, Dwight, what stories that you might have. But there didn't seem, there was a lot of love there, but it was a lot of, I love me and I love the money, and the, but I don't love those around me. A lot of good it is to have the championship trophy, but your marriage is broken or your children don't know who you are. Even Shaq, you guys know who that is? Played for the Lakers, played for the Magic. Shaq has said of his divorced wife, I was the one that caused this to happen. And I want her to have all the best. He said, I made the mistakes because of what I was pursuing. So no matter what the spiritual gift that we might be trying to get, what we might be trying to show in the name of Jesus Christ, if we don't have love, what good is it? What good is it? We want a church that has love, that we are, show love to one another within the church and show love to those outside of the church and those that come in to visit the church. Pastor Pauly was saved out of a... He was the drug enforcer for an outlaw biker gang. He has bullet wounds, knife wounds. And he and his wife came to church, not here, but another church, and they got their lives straightened out and became saved and started working to reach bikers from outlaw biker gangs. He and I were walking through Imperial Beach and people were like walking to the other sidewalk because they thought it was a hell's angel and a white supremacist paired up together. No, we love everybody. But Pastor Pauly said that some of those outlaw biker guys, they've tried drugs, they've tried sex, they've tried money, they've tried power. None of it is filling the God void. And so they come to church because they're looking for a place where they can meet God. And they walk in the door not knowing that they should maybe take off their, and what the patch is on the back of their jacket is called their colors. Some of them were okay to look at, and some of them were very, we would consider them offensive because of what they say. But they walk in, not, they're just coming to Jesus. Jesus doesn't say, clean up and come to me. He says, come to me, and then we'll work on the cleaning up. But they would come into church, and somebody would say, and it's not here, but in other places. You're not welcome here. Whoa. So when I came to be the pastor of this church, I showed the picture of Pastor Polly, and I said, would this guy be welcome here? And they said, absolutely, we have people like that to come here now. And I said, that's where I want a pastor. I want a church that's welcoming no matter what people look like or what they sound like or how they smell, that we're welcoming and we extend love to them because doesn't everybody need to know Jesus Christ? They'll know we are Christians by our love. So no matter what we might do with our spiritual gifts, and they're important, we need to implement. Not everybody is going to do what I do. Not everybody's going to do what Damien does. Not everybody's going to do what Virgil does. We all have different things that we do, but we're to use them, but we're to use them through love. I'm not doing this to build myself up and to get any awards. I'm doing this because I love God and I love others. That's the basic rules. 
So that's what we're... I will do my best to be exactly what God created me to be. I will do my best to be exactly what God created me to be. How about it? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the Word of God. Here in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, where it talks about spiritual gifts, where it lays things out, it says, above all else... Uh, that we should look for faith and we should look for these things, but we should look for love above all else. But Lord, whatever spiritual gifts that come into our church, come into our members, Lord, as we, as we grow into those things and we begin to get excited and do things uh, created for your purpose, Lord, that we will do everything with love. It won't be for our own accolades. It won't be for our own rewards. But it'll be because you love us and we love others and we love you. I thank you for what you've done for us. I thank you for the word of God that tells us these things. Lays things out for us so that we can understand them easier. Love never fails. Help us to remember that as we work for you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for your patience. Um, just a couple of announcements to make. Um, if you are interested in helping with Vacation Bible School, you need to let me know. On the 28th, we're having a training session here at the church at 9 a.m., and I need to register you so that we know who all is coming. So that's to help with Vacation Bible School, which will be in July, starting the Thursday after the 4th of July and running through Sunday. So it's like the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. Okay? We run it Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday all day, and then Sunday morning during church. Um, we will have coffee and prayer. We only have a few more days to do that, a few more Mondays before uh, school is out. Um, but we'll do that again in Bible studies tomorrow morning and normal midweek. In June, and I don't have the exact date. I it may have put it in the bulletin. It says, Mission Yard Sale. Okay, is it in the bulletin? Okay, what's the date? June 25th. We're going to empty the bus and sell everything that's inside the bus. There's a lot of stuff that came out of a lady's condo that they donated it to the church. Juvenal can't take it. The other church doesn't want it in Mexico. They want us to sell it. And if you have anything else, now this is not a yard sale for you to make money for you. This is a yard sale that all the funds are going to missions. So if you want to donate something, now don't get excited and bring four couches and three of those gigantic TVs that nobody wants and say, I got to get rid of this stuff. Here you go, pastor. When man's junk is another man's treasure. Because if you can't sell it, we probably can't sell it. It'll go to Salvation Army, okay? But anything that you say, and, and we'll get closer to that date. We've got to have a day to go through the stuff and set it up for the yard sale. So we'll let you know. But if you have stuff that you like to donate to be sold for missions, Hoovenall is still taking clothing, especially children's clothing and shoes. Um, and if you have diapers, uh, formula is really hard for anybody to get. I don't know if it's worse in Mexico or not. But Hoovenall is taking small amounts of that stuff through as well. Um, I, the other day, I saw that they had uh, two, two pork shoulder roasts in a bag for 99 cents a pound. And he said, buy as much as you can. So I bought 90 pounds of that for his ministry. So every now and then, if you come across something, let me know and we'll see what we can do if it's priced low enough. All right? So those are the announcements. We're not going to sing Victory in Jesus. We would normally, but we're not going to do it today. Thank you for your patience. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these that are gathered here together in your name today. Thank you for the children that sat and listened and those that were able to go outside and play a little bit. We're always grateful for our children and thank you for having them here today. Lord, be with those that are traveling at the retreat and be back safely. Be with us as we go throughout our week that we'll honor you and serve you. And I pray, Lord, that you'll help us to find out what our spiritual gifts are. That we'll pray and say, Lord, help us to know what we can do to help the church. And help us always, Lord, though, to have do everything and everything that we do out of love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here today.